Hey friends, this is Jose Alvarez, and today I'm going to teach you the 11 steps on how to give a personal prophecy. What is a prophecy? A prophecy is a person being able to effectively hear the voice of God on behalf of another person and then giving them that word of what God is telling them. And today, what I'm noticing is people might not want to be, people might not want to convert into like Christianity. There's a lot of stuff out there, but everybody is longing to get a word from God. And there is no more effective way than to show people the love and the reality of God than by giving them a word from Him. If I can do it, you can do it. I, I was a severe stutterer until the age of four. I still have problems sometimes, but when God told me to prophesy, I was still, I was still stuck with, with a lot of stuttering, but God gave me the ability to just give words to people. I've been giving it for the last 20 years. So here's the 11 steps. Number one, spend a lot of time in the Word of God. Why do I say that? Because God speaks to us through His Word. Have you, many times when you're reading your Bible, ha, ha, has there been a, 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 a particular verse that has just kind of jumped up at you? Well, that's God speaking to you. And the more time that you spend studying God's Word, the more that He will speak to you, and the more that He will speak to you, the more effectively that you will learn how to hear His still small voice. So I tell people, if you want to learn how to hear God's voice, which is essential in giving a personal prophecy to another person, you must spend time in His Word. Remember, the more time you spend in the Word of God, the, the more that God will speak to you through His Word and the more effectively that you will learn how to hear that still small voice. Number two, spend time in God's presence. By that it means prayer, it means worship, it means soaking music. But wherever the presence of God is, it tells us in the New Testament, God, God sent His Son Jesus Christ to destroy the works of the devil. Wherever Jesus is manifested in His presence, His presence will destroy the works of the devil in your life. He will destroy sickness, He will destroy His presence through the Holy Spirit, will destroy pain. And what happens is this, if you have a lot of emotional pain, the screaming voice of your emotions will drown out that still small voice of God. So though God is always speaking to you 24 seven, if you are wounded, if you are depressed, if you're anxious, if you're bitter, if, if, if your emotions are all jagged, that voice, that screaming voice is going to muddle that voice of, uh, uh, that still small voice of God. So you want to be sure that you spend time in His presence because that is what is going to destroy those works, those evil works in your life, start to set you free, bring your emotions into order, and allow that still small voice to, to uh, start to become significant in your life. Number three, personal purity. Jesus says, the pure in heart shall see God. Look, getting rid of of sinful habits is a lifelong process. I've been a Christian for 37 years. I still have sinful habits, you know. But God told me, repent from every known sin. There are blind spots that God shows you that, that you don't get rid of it because God is not exposing them. But whatever you know is wrong, ask God by His strength to, to let you get rid of it because the more freedom you have from sin, the, the, the more purity you have in your life, the, uh, once again, the more effectively you'll learn how to hear His voice. Number four, if you have the motivation to prophesy, you can ask yourself, is this something that's really in my heart? Some people don't want to prophesy. Some people uh, 
don't have an interest, but if you feel that you have an interest to prophesy, then you probably have that gift. Because motivational gifts, it, it says in Romans 12, work, I mean, spiritual gifts work by, by, by motivation. So if you have the motivation to prophesy, I'm almost 100% sure that God has, I, I could say that I can guarantee you that God has put that, more, that motivational gift of, of, of prophecy in you. So if you want to prophesy, you probably already have the gift in it. You only have to develop it. Number five, well, people say, well, you know what? How do I know that that's the voice of God? How do I know that that's not my own voice? That's a very, very valid question. As we're gonna discuss a little bit later, practice makes perfect. But one thing that has helped me is this, is Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Well, it says there that I've been crucified with Christ on the cross when I gave my heart to him. And then Paul says, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So therefore, if you're not living, you must be dead. And if you're dead, a corpse cannot speak. So if a corpse cannot speak, there's a good hunch that the one that is speaking inside of you is Jesus Christ. So once again, it's practice makes perfect, but to give you confidence, I learned that many times what I think is not the voice of God, it is the voice of God because I'm dead. And as you know, a corpse cannot speak. All right. Number six, and this is so important. How does God speak? Well, God, God lives in your heart. So many times what your heart's desire, if you have Christ inside of you, He lives inside by the Holy Spirit in your heart. So if you, if your heart is telling you to do something, not your mind, this is something that you learn, not your emotions, but if deep in your heart you want to do something and you're following Jesus Christ, there's a good there's a good chance that that is the voice of the Holy Spirit because He lives inside your heart. Number two, my, my pastor's wife, Kathy Gomez says, what does your gut feeling tell you? What does your gut tell you? Well, again, God lives in your heart. God lives in, in your gut feeling. One way to know what the voice of God is, is by what is my gut telling me? What is my gut feeling? Step out into, step out into that gut feeling. You know, you are dead, you're a corpse, so that gut feeling is probably Jesus Christ. Step out into what your gut tells you and try it. If you make a mistake, so what? I tell people, it's better to make a mistake by stepping out and, and giving a word than just sitting down in fear and becoming an old person with a cane sitting in your seat for the rest of your life, scared just to give a prophecy. The most important thing is this. The Holy Spirit works by what is called intuition or intuitive knowledge. There's two kinds of knowledge. When you go to school, when you go to college, or what we're doing now is you're learning by acquisition. You, you are acquiring knowledge. But then there's the intuitive knowledge. If a girl walked, if a little girl walked into this house right now and she had like a red dress on, I say, oh, that's a nice red dress. That's a, that's a nice red, red, red dress, sorry. That's, that's knowledge. I knew that it was a red dress, but did I have to go to school? No. That's called intuition, instinct, uh, instinctual knowledge. So God works by intuition. Many times the word of God is, oh, I just know this. Uh, God, I just know that, that uh, I just know that God, that God is gonna use you one day to preach. It's like you see a person and you just get like a knowing or, I know so and so. I can't think of an example now, but intuition. God's voice works by gut, in your gut. It's what your heart tells you, and it's just unknowing. It's like, I see a, uh, a uh, person and I say, I just say sometimes, do you like music? Because when I met them, I just felt that God, I had the feeling that music was in them. It was instinctive and in almost every single case, like they told me yes. 
then ask God to give you a word for that person. When I started to prophesy, I just had a desire to bless people with a word from God. To so say, God, when you go to a church, you say, God, or start with your family. You say, God, give me a word for like so-and-so. And just wait there. God will speak to you in many ways. But just wait for that instinctual, that intuitive thing to happen. Then, number eight, the approach. How do you approach people? Well, you, you, you know, people just, people want to be approached like in a uh, normal way. How would you like to be approached? I go to a person and I say, like a person like in a Starbucks or in a restaurant and, and, uh, and uh, if they are like a non-Christian, I will say, look, I will tell them, uh, I'm a pastor from Miami and um, I was just here and, and I felt like if God spoke something to me for you. Would it be okay if I just share it with you? I can say that in 99% of the cases, people in a restaurant, waitresses, people like in a Starbucks, unknown people, people sitting on a sidewalk, in 99% of the cases, people will tell you yes because people are desirous to hear what is God telling me? There's a mystery about the supernatural. What is God telling me? I want to know. So if you say, hey, you know what? My name is, my, my name is, you know, so-and-so, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I was just sitting here and I felt that God had something for you. Would it be okay if I just share it with you? You'll be surprised how many people would just tell you yes. Um, then number nine is get rid of the two diseases that affect the church. That's the butt magnet disease and the, and the passive mind disease. The butt magnet disease is that uh, it's, it's when it seems like if your butt is just magnetized to your chair and instead of getting up and just doing it and just giving the word, fear grips you and it seems like if, like if there's a magnet that has been created in your butt that has you stuck to your chair. You gotta overcome that butt magnet disease. I have given thousands of prophecies over and over. I step out over and over. I, I'm, I'm asking God for a word over and over. I'll go to strangers and there's no formula. I, I'm, I'm just a normal person just like you, but I've overcome the butt magnet disease and I've seen the, the excitement of just sharing a word with a person and seeing how the person's face lights up. The passive mind, it seems like the devil attacks the church with, with, uh, with uh, passivity. It's similar to the butt magnet disease. It's, it's a spurt of, of apathy and, and just feeling paralyzed. You gotta overcome that. You gotta overcome this passive mind disease and this butt magnet disease and get up and, and make a fool out of yourself. So what? God, God will be proud of you. Number 10, practice makes perfect. It's like anything in life. With every prophecy you give, the more confident you will get. So practice, practice, practice. Step out, step out. Just say to a person, will you be okay? I feel that God has something for you. Will you be okay if I just share with you? And number 11, so important. Jesus says that, I forgot John 5, 19 and like uh, 20. Uh, I forgot how the verse says, I'm just waking up right now. But anyways, the thing about prophecy is the way you see it is the way you give it. If a picture comes to you, if a word comes to you, your thing is not to try to interpret what God is telling the person. You don't add to a prophecy, you don't take away from the prophecy. Just the key to successful prophecy and not making mistakes is just say, if you see a word about a guy sitting down reading his diary, you don't say, well, you know, maybe God wants you to know, you say, I want to give you a word. I see you reading a diary and, and I don't know what that means, but I'm going to share with you. And many times people will start to cry because it meant something significant to them. And one more thing that Larry Randolph, the uh, great prophet says, 
prophecy is just like ice skating. When you go to ice skate, you just put one, you know, you, you put one foot on top of the other foot and you kind of launch out into the ice, you know? And there's no formula for it. You just, when you give a word, God says, open up your mouth and I will fill it. Many times you'll start with one or like two words. And I see, I see this with every single person, but once you open up your, your mouth, God says, open up your mouth, but you gotta open up your mouth. God says, I will fill it. And, and, and I see people just start to rattle. People just start with you know, two words. I've, we've trained so many people that have never given a word. And when they, when they ice skate, they just get out on that ice, that ice of faith. Well, you know, uh, this and this word, then God starts to fill your mouth. And we see so many people, we activate people on, on the spot. We just call them on the spot to give a prophecy. People that have never given a prophecy. And what happens is, they take that ice skate, they uh, get one word, and when they give that one word, God gives them more, and before they know it, they are giving a full prophecy, and they love it so much, then then they, then they always wanna give a prophecy. Well, my friends, I know that this is the five minute Bible, uh, Bible, uh, five minute uh, Bible man, but I can't always stick to that if I'm gonna teach you effectively. Well, thanks, God bless, and we'll see you soon.